I've been fortunate to have done it before, but almost because we've done it before, it feels like coming home. Uh, to be able to come back here and to come back to Wright Pat, uh, Wright Field, actually the historic Wright Field, uh, for the flyby as we come in from Grimes and we get to actually pass through, uh, pass over the uh, new Wright Patterson Air Force Base uh, relative to the Wright Field, uh, and then see the Air Force Museum as we uh, make our turn to final, and then land on this historic, basically this historic airfield is always just something that you kind of just get little butterflies, you know, and uh, kind of get really a little bit excited as well coming down the chute uh, and on final and landing here, and then. And realizing that we're here even more importantly for a special event like this to honor the Doolittle Raiders when you're coming in as, in our case, number three of 11 B-25s landing on such a historic piece of concrete. Almost can't even bring it to words. It's just such a great feeling and such an honor and privilege to be part of it. And I've had the honor to be an F-16 pilot in the Air Force and fly uh, one of the most amazing fighters ever designed and built. But when you get in this airplane, it is a true stick and rudder airplane. Uh, you got to keep working and keep flying it all the way down until the brakes are set and the engines are shut down. It keeps you busy, it keeps you on your toes. Um, to be able to bring it in here and know how much work behind the scenes has gone into it. The folks back home at the American Air Power Museum where we're based out of in Republic Airport in Farmingdale, uh, New York, uh, out on Long Island, just 45 minutes outside of New York City. So many dedicated volunteers came out to help us get the aircraft ready. Uh, whether it's maintainers or the maintenance folks working uh, to get it flyable again, uh, or just the guys that took the time and the, the tender loving care to uh, polish the aircraft. Uh, one of the unique things about our aircraft is that it's, a, it's an all natural polish, uh, so it takes a little bit of elbow grease to get it to look that nice. Uh, but all those guys had such a big part in making it possible, especially in our case, the S aircraft actually hadn't been airworthy for about a year and a half. Uh, it was on static display in our museum for the, uh, the last two seasons, um, and we just got it airborne again for the first time. And so we're really excited that the first flight out the chute uh, to an event was to come here for the Doolittle Raider 75th anniversary. That on top of it, all the pilots, especially myself and the other the other crew, were even just giddy with excitement to be able to come out, fly this across country uh, from New York and uh, bring it here and land on this historic field, be able to log that in the logbook and know that, especially with Lieutenant Colonel Dick Cole still here, that we are not only honoring their legacy, we're still honoring a member of that, of that group uh, that inspired obviously a nation during World War II, but has inspired many of us obviously to go on and become pilots and in my case to serve in the Air Force. I was fortunate enough to grow up as a kid around uh, a lot of these aircraft and doing my share of uh, polishing and cleaning and, and uh, whatnot before I actually learned how to fly. Uh, that actually was my first taste of aviation and uh, was a, obviously started me off on a, on a, on a crazy road. Uh, actually, I can credit the Air Force Museum too. My dad brought me here as a kid uh, more than once uh, and I could spend hours and hours as a, as a kid just uh, wandering the halls and both looking at the aircraft and also reading the history, the little the descriptions and uh, motivated me to start reading and learning about the subject matter. Big World War II buff as a kid. Um, then obviously continuing to fly and got the bug and knew that's what I wanted to do. And so these aircraft are great inspiration. Actually, it's one of the real uh, proud things, I guess, about taking these aircraft on the road is being able to take it on the road, display it for the public. Uh, to honor the veterans, especially now with the World War II generation starting to slowly, unfortunately, pass away. Uh, but the great news is that these are also tools to inspire the new generation of av uh, aviators, mechanics, scientists. So to be able to do that using 80-year-old history, <laughs> an 80-year-old aircraft, uh, is absolutely, I think, is a, both an honor and pretty incredible. <laughs> Mishap, the aircraft you see behind you, uh, was actually the fourth B-25 of the first production run ever built. So there were about, I think, 12 to 14 airframes of that first batch. There was no designation, it was a B-25. Of those aircraft, they were initially delivered to Pendleton, Oregon, uh, to the 17th Bomb Group, which was actually the, the, uh, the parent unit to the Doolittle Raiders. It was eventually recalled to North American Aviation, uh, where it was overhauled and set up as a VIP transport, uh, where this and its sister ship, the tail number 2165, ours is 2168, uh, were set up as VIP executive transports. The first one went to Dutch Kindleberger, who was the president of North American Aviation at the time. And our aircraft had the, the, uh, the honor of going to General Hap Arnold, obviously commander of the Army Air Force at the time, uh, and became his VIP executive transport inside the United States until 1944. Glass nose was returned to, to give it its uh, combat look uh, on the nose, its 1940 look. 
Uh, the rest of the aircraft on the inside, you notice that there aren't any turrets or guns on, uh, on the aircraft. That is because the interior is actually built with the uh, executive interior. So the bomb bay was actually removed and turned into a uh, cargo hold uh, for luggage and cargo. And then the bomb bay was cut in half and actually has a place for a bed for long trips. So basically, the, in that case, it was probably General Ar Arnold. I wouldn't say the crew. Now it's, now it's where the crew takes a nap uh, if need be still has the executive interior. We fly it around to shows uh, to show the original construction uh, of this B-25. Goes way back, not just you know, well before the J model. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't much, many versions of the B from the dual raid that have survived, uh, if at all. I think there's very few uh, that are around. And so we take pride in having the oldest surviving example of the B-25.